Yeah, okay. Um, so I want to thank everyone for joining us for this month's discussion again. And um, without wasting so much of our time, the topic for this month's discussion is a beginner's guide to starting a postgraduate degree. So we um, picked this topic this month because a lot of schools are resuming around September, October. So a lot of students are resuming their postgraduate and fortunately it's also um, the time when ASU just recently called off the strike. So many students, even in Nigeria, are also resuming. While it might not be the beginning for some of them, it might not be beginning of their um, postgraduate research study, but it's also, you can also see it as the beginning of their studies after taking almost one year break. So we believe this topic is very important for a lot of people. And the speaker for this topic is Rahim Aminu. He's a doctoral researcher at the University of Radians. And um, before he starts, I just want to give a brief, um, a brief um, information about Rahim. Um, Rahim Aminu is a doctoral researcher at the University of Reading, focusing on climate resilience and small, sorry, I'm coming. Focusing on climate resilience and small older livelihood outcomes in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, Mr. Rahim received his bachelor's and master's degree in agricultural economics from the University of Agriculture, Belkuta, Nigeria, and China Agricultural University in Beijing, China, respectively. Mr. Minu is a certified KPI professional from the KPI Institute Australia and has valuable experience in corporate strategy development, selection of organizational, departmental units and process KPIs for various organizations such as the defunct DPR, Inlax Technology, among others. Mr. Aminu currently works as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Agricultural and Economics and Farm Management at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta, Ogun State. Um, so join me in welcoming Mr. Rahim Aminu, and um, you can you have the floor, Mr. Um, Rahim, to discuss the topic with us. Um, okay. All right. Uh, Salam alaikum, everyone. Uh, can you enable uh, screen sharing, please? Okay. Um, I'm coming. Okay. Um, you can share your screen now. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, just a moment. Why is my Zoom? Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Um can everyone see my screen, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um let me start saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where every one of us is joining. And um, I also want to thank everyone for coming around today for the October edition of the Muslim in Research and Academic Webinar Series. This month, like the host have said, start uh, a beginner's guide to starting a postgraduate degree. And I've been asked upon to uh, make a few comments about this while others were listening and also make their own contribution, inshallah. My name is Rahim Olatunji Aminu uh, from School of Agriculture, Policy and Development, University of Reading, Reading, UK. And but uh, when, when I was asked, I also forgot to ask, when we talk about postgraduates, which of the postgraduates are we focusing on? Is it general postgraduates, masters, PhDs? Because I know we have elder scholars in this group, but 
I've made my presentation a blanket one. So, and I'm aware that uh, there are a lot of us who are professional already. We have professors, we have senior faculty members. Uh, some of the content might not be uh, specific for you, but uh, you can also uh, strengthen our discussion by making comments after I've submitted all my contribution. May Allah make it easy for everyone of us. I mean, um, I would like to start with this quote from Charles Dickens, which says that the most important thing in life is to stop saying I wish and start saying I will. Consider nothing impossible, then treat possibility as probability. So, having said this, let me then go to my outline for this discussion. In the next couple of minutes, I will touch on why do you want a postgraduate degree? It's a question that every one of us needs to answer. I know many of us, we've, we are either we've passed through it or we are currently in the postgraduate realm. We need to answer the question. Or getting involved in your program will be the second main issue that I will discuss. Discover your learning pattern is the third one why you need to build up your work. Uh, practicing of time management, I will talk about that little. Then I will discuss about work-life balance. Or let me say, you know, state one or two things about the benefits of work-life balance. And inshallah, my last points that I will discuss for the day will be what are those relevant skills that we need to develop Why we are going or we are on our program at the postgraduate school. So uh, before I go to the first one, uh, I hope uh, many of us who can still have access to internet or our web browser because we need to go on Mentimeter to uh, quickly answer this poll. Uh, if you don't mind, um, I, you can go to www.menti.com and use this code, enter this code and use it. Then we can see what's every, so I've made uh, a provision of answer, potential answer to, uh, to the question. Just to give me a moment, I will need to stop sharing this screen so that I can go to uh, where I have, yes. Okay, so, um, I will, I will post the, let me post the question on the chat group. Oh, I was, I'm just trying to make it interactive for us so that it's, it won't be myself only. I will just be talking, oh wow, some people, some people are already going there. So let me just put this for those of us that are just coming. So this is a question. Why do people go for postgraduate degree? Um, People are already, already coming. So someone has said passion. Uh, we are about, how many people are we? We are about 13, including myself. So let's say we have about 12 people in the house. Let me see if there's going to be a diverse opinion from uh, what people will say. Uh, Mentee.com, you can see the instruction up, up here. Uh, use the code and let's try and answer the question in the next uh, two minutes. Interesting. Okay. Can I have like, can I have more numbers? We have three people who have responded. Can we have like two more? What would be the 70% of the team? At least if you can have unemployment, two other reasons. Okay. Okay. Five. Okay, can we can we get to seven seven responses then we can can just move on. I need two more responses. 
two more, two more responses. Our time is time is going. Okay, passion. So, wow, it's like we are, we are having a draw. This is seven already. Can we can we make it ten? Ten responses. Actually, we can choose more than one option. When we are responding, we can choose more than one option. But at least this, this is giving us a reflection of why people are going for a postgraduate program. Uh, but for those of us who had a master's done in Nigeria, not those that went abroad, if you look back in your class and ask yourself this question, how many of my classmates that we started the program together and we completed the program, or maybe, you know, depending on how the program is being run. But from my experience, before I went to China, in my class, when I started my master's in Nigeria, we are almost like 24. And before we get to the middle of the first year, almost six people have dropped out. Reason is because they found job. So many people, many people, come for postgraduate degree program because of unemployment. Some will say, okay, let me just be doing this program. After this program, maybe I'll get a better job. Some will come because of the passion straight from master, from undergrad to master's. And for those who have said other reasons, then we'll know the other reasons very soon. But thank you so much, passion, passion, unemployment, other reasons. Nobody is right, nobody is wrong. I just want to know why we think people. So um, the next, the next uh, question. Something wrong with my Zoom? My goodness. Sorry, 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 sorry. Can you ask this see my screen, please? No. Okay. So, so thanks, thanks for those who participated in in that poll. That's the first poll. Now, the second poll that I want to ask us to do is now asking ourselves: for those of us who have done masters, who have done PhD, why did we enroll in postgraduate? Now, this is personal. The other one is asking on behalf of someone else. This one is for us. Now, um, we need to, is this is, is still the same link we are using? Um, we are going to use the same link, inshallah, to answer the question. Let's just go again. Um, let me copy the question here so that people will know what we are talking about now. Why, just this one, you need to give a word. Why did you enroll, whether it's for, job opportunity, whether it's for career advancement, whether it's for um, what else can need be, whether it's just to upgrade or upscale your skill, something like that. Yeah, that's the question in the chat. So we can pick it and you know answer the question. So why, why, do, why did you enroll on your postgraduate program? Skill upgrade to direct my career path change in career. Wow, interesting. So, can I have three people? Can I? Can we make it five? We can make it just one word. I mean, if we can, if it is not, we don't need to write it so long. For me, I have my reason for going for PhD or masters. I want to make more money. I want to make impact. You know. <laughs> So can we, have, can we have two more comments on this so that I can just move on now? I think I'm taking much, I spent like five minutes on this. Skill upgrade, wow, interesting. That's, that's cool. Research and consultancy, that's where the money is, yes. These are my people, we are in the same WhatsApp group, don't worry. Research consultancy to direct my career path, change career to obscure. Wow, 
more people are saying skill upgrade. That's why it's becoming more, it's becoming bolder. More people are saying skill upgrade, skill upgrade. Okay. 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 All right. For career progression. Wow. That's very important. If you are an assistant lecturer and you want to become you want to become a full lecturer, you need to get your PhD. So at least for career progression, I can see I can reason along with that. Can we can we make it seven? So I can just close. Can we see the screen? Can we see the result as it's coming up? No, we can't see your screen. Wow. Apologies. I thought I'm sharing the results. No. Then where is this? Yeah. Okay, can you see it now? Can you see the screen now? No, we can't. Yeah. Yes, no, we can see okay. it. We can see it. Okay, okay, okay. These are the responses of people. Some, some, some said for career progression, about two people said uh, to direct their career paths. Most people said skill upgrade, research and consultancy, change in career. What is most important is that we have one or two reasons for going to grad school. We must have a reason for going to grad school. And that reason will be the source of our, our motivation by the time we get overwhelmed with the activities of the postgraduate program. So thank you so much for those who have uh, participated in this online poll. At least I can then continue with my, uh, with my own submission. So some of the things that Put down in my slides uh, is similar to what you you have you guys have mentioned, and uh, I'll say a big thanks for participating. Now, so why 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 do you want or why do people want a postgraduate degree program? One, to increase their knowledge. So if I put it to you, the reason why you are going for postgraduate degree is to increase your knowledge. And please know that studying a postgraduate degree takes you, your understanding of your subject to the next level. Postgraduate will, degree will stretch your creativity and maximize your sense of, of personal fulfillment. So you are not just increasing your knowledge. There's something that postgraduate program is going to do about your, exist, your current state of knowledge and how it's going to transform it to something better of. Then also, people go for postgraduate degree program to gain qualification. So I want to have, a, I want to have MBA, I want to have a diploma in logistics management. To, to gain qualification is important. And postgraduate study will give you the opportunity to learn from experts and ultimately to become expert on your own. So if you have qualification, like for instance, like myself, I want to have my PhD so that I can progress my career, I can get to the point of being a professor, I can be a consultant, I can be a vice chancellor, I can, you know, it has a lot of reasons, but the most important in the first stage is getting that qualification. People go to postgraduate school or to get postgraduate degree program in order to increase their potential earnings. By the time you finish your degree, trust me, if you are a civil servant and you I mean maybe federal civil service, for instance, and you are able to get a PhD or master's, automatically you can rise to the level of permanent secretary, which will also affects your potential earning. If you want to change your career skill, you want to gain new skill in a new area, you definitely need a postgraduate degree to your portfolio. So these are some of the reasons why people are going for postgraduate degree, including myself. 
So I've I've known why people go for postgraduate degree. What is the next thing for us to do? As soon as you get to grad school, you need to get involved in your program. And the first thing you need to do in getting involved in your program is to understand your research field. You need to understand your, either your subject or research field, that is the models or the courses you need to offer, the, uh, the courses you need to, the lectures you need to attend, the books you need to read, those things that will help you to shape in the whole idea of your research as regards as uh, graduate school is concerned, you need to understand them as quick as possible. Number two, you need to strengthen your academic skills. Strengthening your academic skill means that you need to do a lot of learning. It could be independent learning like self-directed reading, you involve in critical analysis, and you know all some other research skills that will help you. Because these are some of the skills that your employer will eventually be looking for. If there are certifications that you can do, or maybe there are some programs that you need to engage on uh, while you are doing your program, you need to do all these things. Number three, you need to get involved in student society or student representation. I put it there because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an active person when it comes to my community. Uh, fine, I'm doing my program, but even right from my undergrad, I've always been having one or two extracurricular activities added to my academic course. I always have this mindset of having a life outside my a degree program because this can be overwhelming and if we are not careful we'll get uh we'll get lost in our program if you are not engaging in other activities that will make us active and remember these activities can help us to build some skills that the degree program that we are doing will not give will not give us for instance teamwork communication skill negotiation skill, even leadership skill. If you don't engage in other activities, be it uh, volunteering for mosque events or Islamic groups or student union or your departmental seminar, volunteer, organize a PhD conference, be part of the team. These are some of the things that you can put in your CV that can you know, make you to stand out amongst your peer. So you need to do it. Then also, you need to learn from researchers. When I say learn from researchers, what I mean is that, please, let's engage or participate in seminars. Our departmental seminars, be it online or in person, because it will help us to familiarize ourselves with recent, recent research trends in our area of study. And it will also give us the perspective from of other researchers who are not from our field. People can stand up and say, okay, we want to talk about poverty. As an agricultural economist, the way I will view poverty will be totally different from the way a political economist will view poverty. The way psychologists will look at poverty might be different from the way uh, a mathematician will look at poverty. So if we engage in all these activities, it will help us to get involved in our program. So we should not just because uh, I'm going for a PhD, I'm going for master's, all I want to do is just go to class, go home. You need to interact, you need to be socially responsible, you need to be aware and be conscious of what is going on around the environment outside your degree program. So, the next thing I will mention uh, is discover your learning patterns. When I say discover your learning pattern, generally there are four types of learning patterns that I know. Number one is the visual. The, if you are a visual learner, you might find it helpful to create diagram while you are studying. This can help you to uh, better understand certain structure of ideas. You could try 
color coding your notes as well. This can help you to organize information or I can, you, can, you can internalize your ideas in a better form. And most of the people who have visual learners, they tend to use video. They consider videos as a good source of material. They like watching documentary. They believe that watching, uh, having a video clip of a lecture, they can assimilate, they can learn faster. You need to discover which one suits you most, or let me say best. Then we have the other three learners. These are the people who like to do, they will learn more by discussing with people, engaging in group discussion. Maybe there is a lab briefing that, you know, short, short groups that can make you to learn. You can discuss your material. You can discuss a paper that you have just, you just, you just read with your peers. If you are working in a lab, you attend lab meetings. These are some of the activities that they can. And these are people who you can, if for instance, if you go to class or you go to a seminar, if the facilitator is okay with it, if you, they are the type of people that will approach a facilitator and ask, can I record you? Because after the session, when they listen, they will assimilate more faster than even being in that session. So number three, are the, the reader or writer learners. What do they do? These people, these are the type of people, I mean, while we are going uh, during our undergrad or master, you see some people, they will have, let's say 40 page of notes and they will have jotting round one, jotting round two, jotting round three. When exam comes, you won't see them reading the note again. What you see them reading is at their jottings. So these are the people that they will, they will prefer to write, do jottings, make comments on papers. You know, a friend of mine posted something on his WhatsApp status some days ago. He read someone's paper and he was even giving credit to himself that the, the author of the paper should thank him for reading his paper. That kind of person is obviously a reading or writing learner. The last one is the uh, they call it kinesthetic uh, learners. These are people who tend to have much energy by being active. They do, they like to work in the lab, mixing one reagent with each other, get testing, lot of uh, hypotheses, you know, carrying out physical activities. These are the people who love, they, they, this is the group of people who does that? Then they find reviewing materials beneficial to themselves. They can even, they can be, these are the people, when you see people going on the road or on the streets and you see a paper or a book with them reading while they are, maybe they are jogging or they, they, they are on the bus. These are kind of people. But all these things have a benefit. And one of the benefits of you discovering your learning pattern on time, as soon as you get to, grad school is because one, it will enable you to plan for your program and to succeed in that program. It will give you uh, a head start and you'll be able to maximize your potential, be it learning, be it reading, you'll be able to maximize it. It will help you to expand your learning and study strategies. And lastly, it helps you to reduce stress or frustration because you already know the type of reader who you are. You can easily, you know, merry go round about it. You can plan yourself. If you if you go to lecture, you take the recording, maybe audio recording. Once you get back to your room, you play it rather than listen to music. You can play the recording and you can then assimilate everything. So this is also important for those of us that we are just going to grad school. Please let's pay attention to this because I I think it will be useful for us if we can identify who the type of learner who we are and uh, we can then look at the uh, various characteristics and put them into use. Then the next thing is to build up your work. As soon as you if if you are a master student or a PhD student, 
get settled into your program, meet with your supervisor, and start discussing about your research. Commence your dissertation writing as early as possible. Don't wait till towards the end of your program. Yeah, okay, I have I have a lot of time that I can use. So you need to take time, do it as quick as possible. So if you're a master student that you are doing one year program, as soon as you commence your coursework, start thinking about the research you want to do. And I'm sure we might have discussed this topic extensively in maybe in a previous uh, uh, discussion. And what we need to do when I say you should build up your word, quick identify your research questions. You need to review what others have done in literature, design your study. Are you using a qualitative or quantitative method or a mixed method? You need to, after you've done that, then you come up with your uh, answers to all the to all your research question, then you present your finding and you'll be able to, you know, complete your program as on time, on record, and as soon as possible. This is very important. Don't let us wait till we get to the mid of the program or towards the end of the program before we start writing or preparing for a dissertation. One of the, uh, another thing that I will mention is, time management, they say that procrastination is a thief of time. I can bet you if you are not, if you are not careful, by the time you are starting your uh, postgraduate program, you can get overwhelmed finding your feet in the program. And before you realize time has gone already. So, so we need to manage our time. And one of part of the benefit of managing our time is one, if you have a good time management skill, you'll be able to, to achieve your goals. You'll be able to achieve your goals faster. You'll be able to prioritize your work. You'll be able to prioritize your work. You'll be able to get more done in less time, which I call efficiency. You'll be more efficient because you know that, okay, this time I need to sleep. This time I need to cook. This time I need to read. This time I need to go to lab. This time I need to go and have a meeting with my supervisor. You'll be able to be in control of your work. It helps you to boost your confidence because you know that you have put, you've put everything under control. You'll be able to break down tasks into smaller tasks. So rather than taking a whole project and feeling overwhelmed, by the time you know, okay, this time, let me read from this page to this page. Uh, I will consult the library, some textbook, go to library, some part. You'll be able to break it down and you get what, and the overall thing is that it helps you to reduce stress. And which you achieve all your set goal if you make use of your time management skill very well. So it's one of the key skills that we need while we are going to grad school, part of it is time management. So when I talk about work-life balance, what are the benefits of work-life balance? I know it's difficult. This is this topic is usually a controversial one. Even among the HR people, they will be like, it's not easy to achieve work-life balance. But to a large extent, as a student who is going to grad school, please have it in mind to have work-life balance, or let me say study-life balance, because it helps you to maintain your mental health. A whole lot of people are going through depression, suicide, because we are not looking after our mental well-being. And being a grad school student, it's, we can easily get trapped in a lot of issues that can be acting negatively towards our mental health. So if you try to balance your lifestyle with your study style, you trust me, you are doing yourself more good than harm. It will also improve your emotional, physical, and health well-being. Because if you are able to manage yourself, you will be able to 
uh, you know when 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 to read, when others are reading. That does not mean that you also should read. When you're supposed to go on holiday, even though you are you are doing your master's, is a one year program. Nothing stops you from going on holiday. Nothing stops you from doing exercise. I mean, a whole lot of us will, will be doing our exercise. We'll say, oh, I want to I want to go to the gym. We're going in the evening after we've had serious stress during the day. It's you know, thanks to one of my senior colleagues who took me. He says, okay, you know what? If you want to be more productive, and I've tested this hypothesis, and I see that it is working, go into the gym early in the morning, do whatever thing I want to do in the gym. I'll feel refreshed. I'll feel relaxed by the time I'm going to school. And I'll be able to do more things that I want to do than you know, saying that I will go later in the evening. So we need to balance this thing. It's very important. And number three, it will help you to increase your productivity. This is another good uh, point. Because what we are looking at, the number of hours is taking us to complete a particular task. If you, if you are having more outcome, using less inputs, that means that you are having more productivity. You have been productive. So it helps us to increase our productivity. And you will also be able to become more rounded individual. Because you, you can imagine if you, you balance things very well, in the morning they will see you at the gym. Around 11 o'clock, they already see you in the office. By 2 o'clock, you are going for a meeting. By 5 o'clock, you are going to volunteer in an event on campus. By six o'clock, you are back at home. By seven o'clock, you are you are you've started reading your book again. You'll be able to do all these things without affect. I mean, each activity will not affect each other. But it is not easy. We need to keep trying. We need to keep pushing before we're able to get this. And last comment here is that we only have one life. If you don't take care of your mental health. You don't look after yourself. You are getting too overwhelmed with your degree program. You don't use the uh, this principle. Do you have a problem? Yes. Can you solve it? Yes. If no, what next? That kind of principle. If you are not applying it, man, we can fall dead any time. Let's remember that we have just one life to live. So, work-life balance is crucial for us. That's it from the picture. You cook, you take care of family, you go for shopping, you study hard, you do a whole lot of things. We cannot get, we, are, we, we, we can't solve all our problems at once, but we can manage all of them and put them in their right places. The last um, topic uh, or issue that I'll be discussing in this uh presentation is the relevant skills that is that that could be required from us while we are in grad school or that we need to develop one critical thinking we need to creative mindness modeling we need to upskill our uh, statistical skills a whole lot of data analysts data enthusiastic people they are out there now it, before you hear it, we are, uh, I'm trying to model something or, because these are the new, these are where we are going to. Artificial intelligence is coming. It's working with backend modeling, backend Python programming and other stuff. Then even if, when you have, when you can think critically, you can be creative, then you should learn how to communicate all these things you are doing. Your research, your research findings should be able to communicate. You have a seminar, you should be able to communicate. You should also have or develop problem solving skills. Other uh, skills that we might also need or to develop is collaborative skill. As a researcher, you cannot do it alone. You need to learn how to collaborate with others because collaborate, uh, collaboration increases or improves efficiency. Stress management, you must learn how to manage your stress. You must know those things that you need to do that will help you to manage your stress, that will not give you mental stress or physical stress, all kinds of stress. Public speaking is another thing, that another skill that we need to develop. Then like I mentioned earlier, 
time management time management we need this it should be a rule of thumb that we must have time management while we are on on our program um to wrap it up i also end with this quote from rick warren which says that remember how far you have come not just how far you have we have to go you are not where you want to be but neither are you where you used to be on this note i want to say a big thank you for listening to me and i hope we found one or two things beneficial from the uh from the presentation if there's nothing if you cannot find anything please just pardon me i'm also a learner i'm just i'm, I'm an up, let me say i'm an upcoming artist you know so please forgive me if I've not gotten it, but I hope uh, the intention to make this uh, presentation a beneficial one has been clear enough. May Allah accept it from us as an act of Bivada. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Jazakallah khairan rahim for this. And if you have questions, you can either put it in the chat box or just signify. But before that, let me just give a brief recap of um, Rahim's discussion with us. Um, like the topic said, a beginner's guide to starting a postgraduate degree. So the first thing the speaker um, said is that you need to ask yourself, why, why do you want to do a postgraduate degree? Or why are you doing a postgraduate degree? Is it because of skills? Is it because of money? Is it because of unemployment, is he, like different reasons. And the reason why you need to ask yourself this question is that this can be a drive for you during the course of your studies when you feel down or you are feeling um, unmotivated, you can remember, okay, why exactly am I doing this? Um, and um, that should be like a motivation for you to continue um, your studies. Then after, you decide to start your study or when you start your studies, you need to know um, your learning pattern because as um, we are different human beings and we learn through different um, different method. Are you um, an audio, are you a visual learner? Are you an audio learner? Are you someone that likes to um, read papers? Are you someone that likes to take notes? Are you someone that likes to use um, image to understand things? So that one is very, very important. So this would also assist you in um, during your studies and you'll be able to maximize um, what you have been taught or what um, or the research you are doing. Then during your program, you need to be totally involved in different aspects, more understanding, understanding your research, strengthening your academic skills, joining um, student societies so that um, you won't just be focused on um, your research, you know, also volunteering also, this can um, be like additional soft skills for you. So when you finish your studies, you would have like um, different other skills, then meet employers and find out about graduate job. That's part of, um, especially for people that feel, okay, they are doing a postgraduate study because they don't have, they don't have a job. During your postgraduate, you don't just sit down and just, write your thesis or just continue going to class and uh, um, and studying. You also have to like connect with um, employers, let them know, okay, this is what I'm doing presently. This is my research work. This is my research topic. This is what I'm looking for. And from there, even before you finish your graduate schools, you can um, you can get like different opportunities and learn from research. It's very important. Yeah. A lot of people that have gone through this stage we are now and Speaking with them and asking them for advice can help in, um, in can help in a very long way. Um, what else? Um, let me see, let me see. Then time management is very important because um, especially where you have different things, there's some people that are combining their research studies with work. Some people have family, some people have children that they are taking care of. So you need to be able to manage your time in order to, um, to also um, help with your mental state. Because if you are not able to manage your time properly, you can be overwhelmed with your studies. You can affect you mentally. So you need to plan ahead, know which um, 
um, what task you are prioritizing and um, as much as possible, try not to procrastinate while um, doing your work. This can um, help in optimizing um, your research, um, the number of uh, months or number of years you have to complete your work. Then work like life balance, just like I mentioned before, you have to prioritize that. Especially when you have like jobs, um, you have family, um, you have other things that you are doing. So you have to know how to um, balance your work and your life um, and other parts of your life to become a more rounded individual and also in maintaining your mental um, your mental health so that you don't break down. And also while you are doing your postgraduate trust not able to develop re relevant skills. I've mentioned that before, but there are so many skills that are important, your criti um, critical thinking, um, communication skills, leadership skills, problem um, solving skills. Those are very important. I believe that as you are, as um, during the course of your postgraduate degree, those are like, even if you don't want to, those are some of the things I believe that you are going to learn along um, the journey of your postgraduate degree. Um, and I think, yeah, I just summarized it a bit. Um, so in the chat box, there are several questions, actually. Um, should I read it out or would you just check it and read it? Okay, Jezaka, uh, thanks for the recap. I think the recap is even sweeter than my presentation. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Thank um, you so much. Okay. Um, I think the first question I can see from here is from uh Miss uh, or Miss anyway. I'm all of us are Muslim, so I'm not sure we have any transiting that here. So I just want to be careful. I don't want to use whether Mr. or Mrs. So, but some the name is Larry Waju Fajmi, and it says, Thank you for the wonderful presentation, brother. Yeah, my question one, can you help me? Uh, can you help clarify the concept of MSc, MTEC versus M MNG, PhD versus doctorate versus DHPU, if you have any similar with them, uh, familiar with them, the CV resume requirement for a non-academic based graduate study. Okay, let me take the first one. Um, from the literature I know, now, um, depending on school, uh, I'm sure um, like, if you go to the University of Technologies, like Lautech, like um, Lautech, for instance, you have BTech, you have MTech. Even if you study accounting in Lautech, all you have is BTech in accounting. Except if I'm not correct, if there's someone who can then make that correction. So sometimes it's not about whether it's MSc, it could be as a result of the design of the program that where the nomenclature will be coined from. So we know generally MSc is Masters of Science, which covers uh, some social sciences, some part of art, then some part of science. Then MTech is Masters in Technology. Or, so, so it depends on where you are getting it from, whether it's the University of Technology, whether it's a core, you know, then MNG definitely is M Masters in Engineering could then be master's in engineering, civil engineering, mechatronics, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and so on and so forth. If you study in the University of Agriculture, for instance, in UNAB or Michael University or Omidike or whatever, what you are going to have is Bachelor of Agriculture, Master's of Agriculture, and PhD. So your Master's of Agriculture can be in something. So I think that's the difference with those Master's and P and uh, MTech and MH. For PhD, PhD and doctorate, I don't think it's just one is um uh actually I put one is acronym, the other one is for many. I don't think there's any difference between PhD and doctorate if you are talking in terms of qualification. Except doctorates could be a doctorate degree. Anyway, we might have people who are more knowledge than me that can expose their screen. D few, I, mean, I think I'm seeing this one, what I know is M few. I've, I don't think I've seen D few before. M few is when you are unable, after you finish your master's, you've, you enroll for PhD program, but they found that your capability cannot get uh, 
cannot take you through uh, your, your PhD program. So at the mid, maybe at some point, they ask you to go or they will just, they will give you MPhil. So MPhil is higher than master's, but it's not up to PhD. I, I might also be wrong. If I have, if there's someone who can make better explanation to that, uh, welcome. Then the second question, CV resume requirement for a non-academic based graduate. CV, I think you don't need to uh, worry yourself about this, that thousands of CV formats, uh, what do you call it, templates out there that you can look for that we can, when you are building your CV, even MS Word, if you use Microsoft Office, uh, Microsoft Word, there are templates of CV there that you can also use. If you are referring to templates, not the content. Now, uh, academic CV is totally different from non-academic CV in terms of arrangement. Since that goes in the, you can see an academic CV as long as 25 pages, 30 pages, but a non-academic CV, maximum they will tell you three pages. So you need to be more specific about that. Just like I said, there are some uh, components that are required. Even when you are applying and they ask you to submit is an academic CV, they will have stated this. We want to know this, the last salary you earned, your current position, and the number of students you supervise, journal, list of journal can take, can take you like five, six, seven, 20 pages alone. So I think that is the difference. What I have. Um, someone is saying that he has a question. Maybe the person will ask by himself. Uh, Mohammed Ibrahim Mogajido said, "Can one really combine work with PhD in Nigeria if one is not working in the academic environment? How can one develop oneself more in the public speaking?" Trust me, I find I have a lot of people who are not working within the four walls of the university and they are running their program. I know it's not easy. It's a bit easier if you are doing it outside Nigeria, but it's not easy given the economic ash, the economic challenges, family issues and stuff like that. And to be able to combine, even those that are in, that are within the university that are running their program, they, 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 are, they will be doing the program and they will still be teaching in class. They will still be doing other departmental activities. So, so it's not easy, but I think, the best thing is if you can find a way to take leave, study leave, focus on your PhD, get it done. But if you cannot, because that will also uh, influence whether you have a funding or not. Do you get it now? So if you have a funding, you can go on leave of absence, focus on your study leave, get your PhD done, move out. But if you are the ones self-funding yourself, you need to go to work and then don't do full time. That is the mistake that a lot of people have been making. If you know you have a job at hand and you want to get your PhD done, don't do full time PhD, do part time. So if the normal PhD will take three years, know that you, you are doing your PhD for about five or six years because you are, you are on a job. So, and even outside, I think that is what is tenable. If you are working and you want to do your PhD, you do part-time. They will not even admit you into a full-time when they know that you, you are working. So let's, uh, let's know. Then how can one develop? Well, developing, acquiring some skills in terms of public speaking, you need what you need to do. Uh, you, you can read, but you also need to undergo some training. There are a lot of training firms in Nigeria who are running this program. And uh, on LinkedIn Learning, you can also get, you can get some training there on uh, Coursera, uh, New Learn, uh, and so on. You can do a lot of training, but it's something that can be, that skill can be transmitted via training. And you also need to train yourself. I, there are a lot of barriers that prevent people from becoming a public speaker. And trust me, it's not until you stand on the podium and talking to uh, 20, 30 uh, people, that you say, okay, you are talking, I mean, you are, uh, you, are, you, are, you are a public speaker. It is not, even within, at home, you can start from your, from your uh, nuclear family. Every morning, do when you are doing a scan, be the one that will facilitate uh, the memorization of the day, or the ideas from uh, Riyadh Solihin that you want to do. You can start 
talking to yourself. There was one, someone I recommended that uh, during, during the lockdown that he has all his family. And I said, sir, while all of us are here, let's try to be having discussion every night after Tarawi. And this key, these guys, they were able to develop their skill from there to that. Now they go, when they go back to school, they are discussed, they are taking classes, taking tutorials, leading. To the, so this is where you can start it from. So if you have the opportunity that you have people at home, use them as practice. They won't charge you any money. Uh, Mohammed Ibrahim is asking that how can a master degree student overcome his or financial difficulties? A situation where he didn't, he didn't acquire a material. Ah, where? This one is, is deep. I don't know how you want to uh, overcome, but it's only Allah that, uh, that, that, that can help every one of us to overcome our financial difficulty. Even Dangote is still looking for money. So you also have financial difficulty. But like I said, when I said that, why do people go for PA, uh, masters at the beginning? Because I've seen a lot of students. The reason why we have attrition rate is because they will have saved, for instance, for those that are just coming from NYC, they will have saved during their NYC, saved their money, then they will go for master. They will pay first year. Then the problem now is how do you want to get the second year? How do you want to get the third year if you are, if, 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 if you are unable to finish within two years? These are major problem. And a lot of people left their program because the inability to raise funds. May Allah make uh, it easy for every one of us and make our financial challenges easy for us to be able to get more money to do this program. But like I said, please and please, we don't need to rush. We can do our postgraduate program anytime. If you know that you don't have a reliable source of finance, I will not advise someone to start the journey of postgraduates. That's why you need to, while you are doing your undergrad, let's tell our world, let them focus more by graduating with good grade. When people graduate with good grade, you have a propensity to get scholarship. If you get scholarship, you can be able to, then you won't have any worry. But I still, I, I recognize that it is not everybody who, you know, who study well and at the same, at the same time, uh, they will still get better grade. May Allah make it easy for everyone of us to, uh, to come out in flying color in everything we are doing. I know it's not easy, but we should keep trying. Allah, 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 Allah loves those who try who strive in order to make uh, to make good things in life. So let's keep trying. For the finance, the only thing I can recommend is let's look elsewhere for the opportunity. We, there are a lot of funding out there. There are a lot of funding. May Allah make it easy for us. I think the only person that is left is the person that said you want to ask this question. That is uh, Mohammed Ibrahim. It's the same if person that typed. Okay, it's the same person. Okay, I think I've, I don't know if there is other, there are other people that also want to make comment. I know there are a lot of senior colleagues here who can also help me to do justice to some of the questions. Yeah, so if, if there is any um, contribution to what the speaker said, you can, um, okay. I think Dr. Sharafadin wants to contribute to this. Well, okay, <clears throat> somebody can run to our too. Well, okay, um, thank you, Brother Rahim, for the good presentation. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear Okay, you. I just want to talk about the, the M field, yeah, the M field that you talk about. Okay, I think those that don't make the PhD grade after their master program, so before they can be allowed to do PhD, they, are, they have to pass through the M field, um, not necessarily when they are not doing well in their PhD. So I think it's about the, what they graduate with, with their master's program. So when they don't have uh, is it 60% or so, uh, which is a PhD uh, grade. So when they can proceed directly to PhD, then they have to do M field. Then before they can then start the PhD program. 
So that's the only thing I want to contribute. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. Zakala, for that uh, correction. Anyway, from my own school here, uh, once you, there's what we call confirmation of registration. If you're unable to pass that confirmation of registration after the first year of your PhD program, then they will assign you MPhil. This is in the case of University of Reading School of Agriculture. It might differ from, well, I'm aware of uh, what uh, uh, Prof said. I'm aware of that. Um, I mean, if you don't make 60%, again, we also need to keep encouraging our brothers and sisters. Let me seize this opportunity to say that for those of us that we are working in the university back in Nigeria, please and please, let's identify some champions that we can mentor or we can uh, help them to navigate through this uh, period. A whole lot of, I have, there was a time that it was so worrisome for me that most of the people that are quitting their program are Muslims and they are not doing bad at all on their program. They are even top of the class. But just like the question one of my brothers asked about financial issues, and you see about two, three, four sets, those that are leading the class are Muslims and they are not completing their program. And when you talk to them, ah, but uh, there's no money, or they need to go and also they need to. So it's not something. Maybe, maybe one day Mira will become a funding mm -hmm. agency, a funding body that will be sponsoring people. In order to this is this because by the time they want to do recruitment mm -hmm. and the department is looking inward, who are our potentials? The Muslims that are topping the class, they are no more there because they've responded their program. So it's something that is worrisome. Allah like make it easy for every one of us and make um, the woman better for us. Um, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam I know I always run away from speaking, but uh, brother has talked to one important aspect that I think uh, maybe Dr. Zainab will start thinking about it. It's something that is possible though. And that is the issue of seeking for funding and looking for a pool, and setting up criteria for awarding to deserving scholars that will make use of it. Um, that, that, that's one thing I, I want us to take a look at for the future. It may not be immediately, but it's something that is possible. And the issue of MPhil, I think largely most of the academic environment are trying to do away with MPhil in Nigeria, so to some extent. I know abroad, if you fail to make the cut for your PhD studies, you rather than saying you have just wasted your time, they will just give you the MPhil. After it's ready in one year or one and a half years where you get your confirmation. I thought it's one and a half years. It's between but 12 to 15 months. It's 12 to 15, okay. So I know a couple of universities abroad, they will... I was kicked out in South Africa after one year. The, my school's own is 12 months, and I I didn't meet the court, so I was kicked out. And there was no opportunity for him feel in that school anyway. But in Nigeria, like uh, Dr. Sheridan said, most of the schools that try to do that, they will give him feel it's more like uh, equivalent to PGD before master's now. And they're trying to use that to get students so that you don't go away. And I think they do that for those with HND as well. If you have HND, PGD, and even with your master's, and we do, you don't have BSc, they will first admit such students to P MPhil, just like a qualifying Rather than say, because I know a couple of years ago, even with your master's, if you, even if you make decision in your master's from HND, if you don't have BSc, you will not graduate in some Nigerian universities. So the window of MPhil was introduced to, to cross from different departments or to make up if you don't meet up to 60%. But I know, in a particular school, some people made six, even 70% in their masters, but because they did not have BSc, they were admitted into MPhil. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Asalaamu um, Alaikum. Jazakallah Khairan. Jazakallah Khairan. 
past time. So is there any final contribution before we end today's discussion? Uh, if there isn't, inshallah. Sorry, sorry, can I make a point? Okay. Sorry, I am sorry, um, the speaker. I am the MAD, M engine. I was made to understand that M engine is for non-academic, those that want to work in the industry, like those that require it, uh, masters for for industry sake, why the M tech, our MSC is for those that want to go either with other academics or just want to get a degree. While the diffuse, I think the diffuse is just used here in my school or some other school in South Africa. The diffuse is different from PhD. Yeah, I don't know why. So I think that's just the main thing I was able to find about it too. All right, thanks for the lecture. Okay, um, thanks, uh, Brian. Thank you so much. Um, okay. And with that, we would um, end today's program. But before that, I just want to mention again that this monthly discussion is organized by Muslims in Research and Academics. And we have um, monthly discussions, inshallah. Next month, last Sunday of next month would be our final discussion for this year because we use December to prepare for next year's topics and guest speakers. So we'll have our final um, discussion for this year next month, inshallah, last Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Nigerian time. And also, in case you need um, the recordings for this or you want to send to someone, um, there's a YouTube link. Um, I'll try and post it on the chat box before I end this, where you can send or share to other people and they can also benefit from this. I'm Zakala once again to the speaker and to all participants. Thank you very much. May Allah reward everyone who was I hope it's the same Tola Shugbeson that I know with Ayomori Tala. Yeah.